Hi, I'm Ron Ritz from Skunk River Cycles. The issue of the day is how to fix a flat tire. Everybody gets them, but me, and even I occasionally get them. I don't personally believe in getting flats, so I keep those off my schedule. Things I've seen in the course of years of people using tools to fix flats are things um, that are quite surprising, are things like corkscrews, because they have an edgy type thing on them, screwdrivers, uh, I think screwdrivers are a big no-no. They are kind of pointy and they may cause some tire damage. One of my favorites uh, is knives. One of our customers complained because she kept getting flats and she'd been using a butcher knife to pry the tire off the rim. Not a really good choice. There is a variety of tools used called tire levers. They're shaped with a scooped edge and a hook to facilitate removal of tires. So we're assuming you're riding in the country and you get a flat. Some terrible demon threw a piece of glass at you, or a nail, or a wire, or in one case, one of our customers came back with a pheasant leg stuck in his tire. Fish hooks are pretty popular around fishing lake areas. So we've got a flat. What happens next? We're assuming you know how to take the wheels off. Front wheels and back wheels come off pretty easily. Find the favorite tire lever of your choice. This is a brand from Topeak I like because they're very, very strong and they have a lot of extra leverage. Our most popular brand in the shop here is uh, Pedro's. The nice thing about Pedro's, if you drop them in the grass on the side of the road, they're bright yellow, pink, green, or orange. You can find them easily. So assuming you found what caused your flat, pull it out or mark it with a pen or a magic marker or just pay attention to where it is. Go opposite the valve stem, use the tire lever, and put the tire lever underneath one edge of the tire. This is called the tire bead. Sometimes you may have to connect the tire lever to one edge of the rim or spokes. Oops, this is a kind of a wide spoke. It's kind of a high performance wheel with extra wide um, spokes. It's difficult to hook that one. Take a second tire lever, maybe three or four inches away from the first, pry it under the rim or tire edge. Take that second one a couple more inches in and pry. At this point, the tire is usually loose enough that you can stick the first tire lever underneath the rim tire edge and peel off one whole edge of the tire. Pay attention to where the valve is, where the label is, and it makes it easier to find the flat for a reference guide. If you have a Presta valve, which is the tall skinny valve, this is called a Schrader valve. You can see their difference in size. Schrader valves are commonly found on entry-level bikes, some of the mountain bikes. Press the valves because they're easier to inflate with a hand pump and hold higher pressures a little more effectively are found on performance bikes. That seem like they get a few more flat tires. Maybe because the tires are skinnier, who knows. So back to the tire valve. I go opposite the valve again and peel off the second side of the tire. Sometimes you need a, the tire lever again to pry off the tire edge. Sometimes you don't. Okay, so at this point I'm peeling off the opposite side of the tire. You can use your thumbs. And um, I suppose you have to take the fact that I've been fixing flat tires for 40 years. That maybe my thumbs might be a little bit stronger than the average bike rider's thumbs. So maybe that just seems easy to me. We have the rim with the tire and the tube. Put the rim down. We'll put that on our table here. Okay, at this point I have the tube removed from the tire. I'm going to see what caused the puncture. I'm going to ins install the pump onto the tire valve. Use the little T-handle, it's kind of convenient. Puff enough air into the tube to give it some shape to determine where the puncture is. Remove the pump from the tube and inspect the tube for leaks. You can hold it next to your face. You can, if you see a potential puncture or cut, you could spit on it and that would cause a bubble. If you see a bubble or uh, you feel air coming in your face, at that point you can use a patch kit, which we have in this pile someplace. There we go. Patch kit from Skunk River Cycles, or you can replace the tube. 
I usually patch my tubes about four times before I replace them because I figure they have to earn their keep. From a business standpoint, <laughs> we'd like you to replace your tubes every time. So I've determined that cause. I have a puncture on the outside part of the tube. I'm going to look in my tire and find the culprit. Well, piece of beer glass or beer bottle. I'm going to scrape it out of the tire. Check the inside part of the tire for any cuts to the inside part of the tire body. And we're assuming that maybe I ran over more than just one piece of tube. I'm going to check the rest of the tire. Most tires can be turned inside out to make it easier to find the inside part of the, um, make it easier to see the inside part of the tire. I don't recommend uh, rubbing your thumb inside the tire very quickly because you might find a piece of glass or wire that could cause some uh, other cuts to your, to your thumb or to your skin. Getting a cut out in the dirt, probably not a good idea. So I've got that one piece of glass, I pulled it out, everything else looks good in the tire. Now I'm ready to put the tire back on the rim. I look for the tire label, I look for the valve hole. Uh, before I put the tire on the rim, I inspect the rim for dirt or nicks and make sure there is a cover over the spoke holes. So I find the uh, valve hole. And this particular tire that I have is called a Kevlar beaded tire. And so the tire bead, which is the very edge of the tire, has a uh, fiber reinforcement of Kevlar or other kind of high density, high strength material. I'll look for the label on the tire, and it's really more of a matter of convenience for future reference. It's not a necessity, it's simply a convenience for me. I'll go to the valve hole, work on one side of the tire. I'm going to start with the side you'll see first, and just poke that in there, and work with my fingers, guiding it onto the tire edge. I'm going to have to flip it towards me so I can see what's going on. And. And there we go, pop it right in place. Now I have my new tube. Go back to the label, find the rim hole or valve hole, put the valve through the hole, carefully install the tube around the edge of the tire. Kind of work it in all the way around with your fingers. No tools are required. At this point, go back to the valve stem again. Make sure that thickened area is well placed inside the tire body. That's a common error that our customers make or even new mechanics make when installing a tube in a tire is getting the tube on the outside part of the tire. It seems like it'd be simple, but it's a easily overlooked. Use your fingers and work on the tire a little bit from each direction. I'm going to work it near the top with my fingers, holding the other edge uh, stationary. Make sure the tube is pushed up inside the tire body. It's kind of a matter of practice. You'll find that it's more convenient as you get more flats. Hopefully you never really have to practice that much. We have about 10 inches of tire left to um, install on the rim edge. Carefully push the tube up inside there. One thing that I occasionally do for my own tubes, if I have a very tight fitting tire, if I find a tire that's tighter fitting, I will use talcum powder on the tube, liberal dose of talcum powder on the tube and it makes the tube and the tire combination a little bit slipperier. So I've got this last four inches. I kind of pry the tire up Sometimes you need to use a tire lever again. So tire levers, if you're kind of careful at this point so you don't pinch the tube with the tire lever, and that's one reason we don't recommend using uh, the old-fashioned metal tire levers or the bottle opener or the table knife or the screwdriver because all those tools may cause the tube to get punctured um, and you've just fixed that. 
Usually, you can just pull the tire back up on the, on the rim edge, and it just pops it in place. At this point, I like looking at the tire all the way around and pinching it and squeezing it to make sure the tire is molded carefully into the rim edge. I give the valve stem a little bit of a push to push it up into the tire body. Use your favorite inflation tool. Put the pump onto the tire valve. This happens to have a locking valve stem, a T-handle. I wrap one thumb around the tire and hang onto the pump head and just That's enough to ride on. And then take the pump off. Close the lock nut for a Presta valve. Schraders have a self-closing valve. This bike or this tube has a lock nut to hold the tube in place. Make sure you reinstall that. Not necessary, but it's nice. Then we're ready to go riding again. Thanks a lot for watching our informational video from Skunk River Cycles. Have a great day and don't forget some of the best times of your life are spent riding your bike. Thanks.